Now to the extreme, potentially life-threatening heat set to hit the West Coast and the record-setting heat wave happening near the Arctic Circle in Russia. Temperatures near 120 degrees there, unfathomable. So is this the new normal? Our Ginger Z has this week's It's Not Too Late. Hi, I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. This weekend, Portland, Seattle, parts of the Pacific Northwest could see their all-time record highs. A lot of those sites started recording back in the 1940s, so it's been about 80 years of records, but we could smash the records. Portland, their all-time record high, 107, could easily get to around 110. Seattle, looking for not just an all-time June record, but potentially an all-time record record if they get to 103 or higher. Listen, we know that weather is not the same as climate. However, we do also know that climate change makes extreme heat waves like this more likely to happen, and they do stick around longer. But for this story, I'd love to take you around the world a bit. So let's go to St. Petersburg, Russia, where their average temperature this time of year, probably closer to about 70 degrees, they were in the low to mid 90s, the hottest they'd been since 1998. Moscow hit an all time June hottest temperature on record, and they've been keeping records since the 1880s. Just this week, ground temperatures did get to 118 degrees above the Arctic Circle. And you look at that and you say, that seems wrong. But one of my friends who works in this industry in the climate science says that's not the number that we should focus on. It's more about the long-term trend. Polar areas in the Arctic and in Russia are warming three times to four times faster than anywhere else in the world. So while this event is, you know, alarming in itself, to me, it's really the long-term trend. It's, it's just warming so much quicker, and it's, it's a sensitive region of ice and unique ecosystems that are going to be impacted by so much warming if we don't make a difference, and we still can. Because it's well beyond this story about one heat wave. This whole spring has been up to eight plus degrees above average. I think as far as a climate change perspective, there's been research to show that last year's warmth, the heat waves in Siberia were caused by human uh, anthropogenic, human caused climate change. So the problem is we're getting these heat waves in Siberia, which are melting the sea ice earlier and earlier. You're getting all this incoming sunlight into the ocean that's storing heat in the dark ocean. So the ocean is just getting warmer and warmer. And this heat in the ocean is preventing the sea ice to form. So not only is the ice melting earlier in summer, but it's also forming later in the fall and winter. And just because I know somebody will ask, we realize that the Arctic was at one time tropical, but now it's not. And it has never been warming at this rate. Climate change is rolling the dice in favor of more extremes. These heat waves won't happen every year, but they're likely to increase in the frequency that it, they occur moving forward in the next couple decades. If we reduce our greenhouse gas emissions in the future, we could in theory prevent the Arctic from becoming ice free. It is not locked in or a guarantee. We can prevent some of those worst impacts and really have an important opportunity um, right now to make a difference in really preventing the worst changes within the Arctic, which then affects the rest of us elsewhere in the globe. Every action, every degree, it has to help because it really isn't too late. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.